as autumn turns to winter, my thoughts often turn to plants that will give me interest for the autumn, winter, and very early spring months in my garden. Today I'm at Bates Nursery with Austin Lowen, and we're going to talk a little bit about conifers. So let's start over here with this camisiparis. Sure, this is called gold mop cypress. We sow a lot of them, and they generally come in round. They do not stay like that. As mm -hmm. this plant grows, it takes a leader and it goes up to a point. So what you end up getting is this, you know, about eight foot wide base working up to a point to about eight feet tall. Right. It makes a very small specimen tree for the conifer garden that keeps this golden color with, with as long as you have plenty of sunlight. Right, and I can attest to that because I have one of these, and this is one of those cases where I say sometimes plants don't read the labels. Uh -huh. And I noticed that they've changed the label on this because yeah. it used to say three by three and uh, it gets a lot bigger than that I have one limbed up in my garden that you can walk under really and uh, yeah. it's tur I've kind of turned it into a little topiary uh -huh. thing so it's a good anyway plant. it is a great plant yeah. for this this region full sun full to sun. keep this really to good full good color day. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all right um, another camisiparis and I'll pick this one up because it's little um, this is camisiparis obtusa uh, one called fern spray gold and I picked this up in my hand just to point out the fact that you can buy them really small like this. You can mm -hmm. grow them in containers. Um, but again, keep in mind that this has a mature size and that it's not always going to be this small unless you purposely keep it that way. Sure, they kind of call it the bonsai starter pack, if you will, so right. that lets you you know, start with a small one and then either keep it small or let it grow. Right. So this plant can be planted in the garden. It's got a very uh, Japanese effect, actually, in your Japanese sure. gardens. Uh, rock gardens, it makes a, uh, makes a good planting as well. Right. All right, let's go down here to this little blue one in the front. This mm -hmm. is a this is a type of juniper. It is it's called blue star juniper. It's mm -hmm. a good seller for us. It's really uh, it's got excellent color. I mean, from bluish to silvery, all all in the same plant. Right. Um, and it stays small, which is kind of nice. Most juniper will end up getting pretty wide right. on you. This one it stays kind of tight, and it just kind of yeah. sticks to that true kind of two to three by two to three tall and wide. Yeah. So if you have a, a smaller area, but you really need something evergreen or something lower growing, this is this is one that will give you an interesting form too because as it grows it kind of mounds and pieces kind of open up but then they fill back in and it mm -hmm. becomes this sort of lumpy little silvery blue mound in the garden it's a really pretty thing mm -hmm. all right this is a fascinating one that's right here uh, in the front of the table uh -huh. Yeah, that's a whipcord arborvita. The name is, is fitting for this plant. Very hairy, if you will. It's got yes. these long strands that come down. I love it as a mixed container plant. I mm -hmm. think it's really good for an evergreen in the back of a mixed container where you can keep it through the wintertime and it keeps that color. Right. But it's kind of shaggy. It's almost got that spilling you know, effect in the, right. in the front of a container or in the back of a container. Sure. This is actually a variety of the Western arborvita, And the one that people would know more commonly is Green Giant, mm -hmm. which grows 40 feet tall. Exactly. And this one will not do that mm -mm. and you would not set these two plants side by side and think that this was even closely related to green giant not at all um, so the variations that can occur in conifers are really fascinating mm -hmm. Another arborvitae that we can talk about is this one that's right here in front of me, and this one is Morgan. Mm -hmm. Yep, another gold one. Yep. Stays true gold with the full sun. That is that is crucial with this one. Um, but it's fairly small too. It takes a more erect habit, so it's a you know it's an upright. Yeah. Um, it's a good spot for a tight little spot maybe that you need to keep thin. It will chunk out a little bit on you, but it stays for the most part thin, and it reaches up to a point you know maybe eight to ten feet tall. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of where it maxes at. So yeah. it's a it's a it's a good one for the gold. <clears throat> I had this in my garden at one point. I've since taken it out because it was taking up a lot of valuable real estate mm -hmm. and a, a big snow one, big snow one winter actually kind of split it open yeah. and it didn't re recover very well. But all of that to say I still really like this plant. I think it's a great choice for you know small to medium sized gardens where you don't have a lot of room for an arborvitae that gets huge but mm -hmm. you need that uh, color or that form. Yeah. Uh, it's Morgan is still a very very good choice. Uh -huh. Uh, now we've got a conifer that grows r really large, but yeah. over a o over a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to me a little bit about this deodar cedar, but you know even just deodar cedars in general. Yeah, well this one's the golden variety, right. which is one of my favorites. Uh, deodar cedar in general is one of my favorite conifers that we sell. Like you mentioned, they do get very large 
as they grow too, they, they have a funky shape a little bit. You can see how these arms kind of go, and as they age, they, they do that even more. So right. as they get up taller, you know, you see some stems going way out this way. It's a very army plant, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, as it ages though, it gets more graceful, and those, those stems tend to stop going so gnarly, and they tend to kind of droop just a little bit. So it almost creates this pendulous habit. It goes up to, like you said, about 40 foot tall, right. um, you know, 12 feet at the base. I mean, even bigger sometimes with old ones, but just very, very interesting. And once again, like I've talked about with all the golden stuff, it really needs full sun to keep that good golden color. Um, and it'll perform well for you. It likes to be on the dry side when you first plant it. You don't need to just keep it overly soaked. Uh, they do not like that. So let them get established. After they do get established here, you generally will never have to water them again. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a, just as a little aside I'll mention, this is a really long term investment mm -hmm. in your landscape. Uh, longer than we tend to kind of think about things here in America sometimes. And I say that because I've been lucky enough to travel to a lot of different places. And when we're in England, we see a lot of these that were mm -hmm. planted 200, 250 years ago. They're yeah. still going strong. And uh, man, when they're old, they get these big, broad heads on them. They've kind of limbed themselves up and they're really, really magnificent. So this is a great tree for really any age, but uh, you know, at any age it's beautiful, but you do need to place this one correctly in the exactly. landscape. It deserves space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as I'm looking across the, the nursery here, I see some other plants over here kind of in my view. And I notice um, blue spruce. Mm -hmm. Do you have a f favorite that you think is better suited to the heat and humidity of the south? Or <laughs> is they're kind of very similar to me in my thought press process anyway. So I've seen nice blue spruce here, right. but not that many. So we do sell it because we all love the blue. It's a right. beautiful tree. They're slow to grow. And sometimes if they find their right home, they can be beautiful. Now finding that right site is can be a little tricky in Middle Tennessee. You know, we don't have native spruce here in right. Middle Tennessee specifically. So planting a non-native isn't always a bad idea, but with this plant specifically, it's a little tricky because, you, like you had mentioned, yeah. in the in the heat of the summer, it's the from humidity, the mountains of Colorado. Exactly, state tree of Colorado. Yeah. Let's be honest. But I have seen a few that can get big here and look sure. nice and keep the blue color. That's the biggest thing. Is a lot of times they live here. Don't get me wrong. Right. They tend to struggle and stress a little bit, so they lose some some needles on the interior. Yeah. And they tend to lose that really rich blue color here. Sure. Uh, but if you find the right home, it can be done here. Right. Uh, I'm also looking over here and I see some Norway spruce. Yes. And to my way of thinking, that's actually a little bit better choice for our area. Most that we definitely. see some big ones around oh, the Nashville have. area. There yes. are some huge ones mm -hmm. that were planted, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years ago. Oh, maybe. probably, yeah. It's a long way. Um, I just feel like that, even though it's not blue, mm -hmm. that dark green, beautiful color mm -hmm. is a good choice for large conifer specimens if you're if you have the room mm -hmm. uh, and can handle something that will grow that size, the yeah. Norway spruce is a good one. Norway spruce is fantastic. I mean, it, it, it's not a true native here, but it's naturalized just fine in Middle Tennessee. Right. Uh, what I like about Norway spruce is that no two are alike. Yeah. You may see one that grows really tight and full and stays that way. Yeah. You see big old ones that get these long arms that, and that, that hang big, down. Big pendulous branches yes, that uh -huh. hang really and they're, they're all kind of different. So yeah. that, that's one of my favorite things about Norway. It's a good plant for us. So one other plant that's really caught my eye are the Arizona cypress. Tell me a little bit about those and growing them here. Uh, it's a good plant for our zone. They grow much faster. And if you wanted an option that was better than blue spruce, you go with the blue pyramid Arizona cypress that we have over mm -hmm. here. The speed is tremendous. You'd be amazed how fast they get big. Um, and they had this beautiful blue color, especially in the spring. It's almost silvery in, in appearance. Mm -hmm. There's another one we sell called Chaparral Arizona Cypress. It's actually right here behind me. Oh, it's yeah. got almost a seafoam color. It's, right. a, it's one of the weirdest greens I've ever seen in the plant world. And we sell them because of that. It's just something you don't see very often. It's very interesting and they live here well. Right. It's adapted to our heat, humidity. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll withstand our humidity mm -hmm. and uh, being native to Arizona, once they're established and, and you you know, have a good root system on them, they're incredibly drought tolerant. Oh yes, yeah, you, so, like you said, once they get established, you'll never have to water right. those things. Good screening tree. Uh-huh, most yeah. definitely. It's so, an underused screening tree, if you ask me. Right. They're a little expensive, I think is why people maybe don't shy away getting from them. Yeah, like Green Giant or Leon yeah. Cypress are much cheaper. Yeah. But if you want a blue color along a, you know, a, a row to hide something off, man, it's a really good plant for that. Well, Austin, thank you so much for uh, lending us your knowledge and your time today mm -hmm. and I hope that everyone at home will consider some conifers for their gardens. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.